Hello everyone, it's Marie from Skeletorama again. Welcome back to my channel. Kevin okay, Hauschiff, how's everybody doing? I'm doing pretty good. So this is the final-ish. Um, there's still that half of one out there that uh, was the different um, paper clay and stuff that I'll be doing next. But um, this is the last of the four items that I foolishly thought would be two videos. And I should really know better by now, but I don't. Um, so anyways, this is going to be for the Clockwork Raven um, decoration item, curio, whatever you want to call it. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. So now we have to decide what to do with this one. So the decision has been made basically for this and that's, that's really all that's concrete right now. So this right here has a nice little dome lid. It comes off and you put whatever in here. Um, so since the snow globe one is a little more suited to a skull i thought you know we can do maybe one of the raven skulls in here and i was thinking okay how do we stand this it can stand up like say like this but how do we do that in such a way that makes sense and then what do you do with the back of it right because of course this is this flat on the back and i thought wait a minute i have one of them that didn't come out that great and so it, it lost part of the eye um, when i took it out of the mold but it, it could double for the back of the skull maybe you know so cut some of this down sand some of this down um, and give it more of like a 3d look and i was thinking i could put wire between the two to hold it up so i figured probably 20 gauge um, wire would work so this is 20 gauge wire looks like i have some brass in here perfect the other is copper. So this could maybe go underneath it, you know, obviously glue it in there and sandwich it between the two. And then this could sit maybe in some of that leftover foam um, from one of the dollhouse kits on here and then figure out what to do with it from there. So I think that'll work for that. So I don't think we're going to need as many of the gears um, for it. Certainly not the larger ones. These aren't going to fit. Um, but I still want I still want them there as options. So we'll leave those here. I do have the watch part ones. And there's a lot of really cool stuff in these. So let me go get something to put these in so we can actually see them. Alright. So I just have one of these boxes that you use to make like... Uh, configuration box or mixed media thing or something like that. I forget who makes it, but it's also really good to do this with. And dump, because these parts are tiny, tiny, tiny. So yeah, you don't want to just kind of poke through them and dump. So let's see what we got in here. Because what we could do is we could make this, since these are supposed to be not necessarily, oh, he's, you know, Dr. Doolittle and it's, it's an actual Raven skull. We can make it something weird and alien and put like maybe, you know, gears behind its head or something. If I could, you know, grab one because they are small, but, you know, maybe have some gears coming out this way because all that can be glued on before it's sandwiched into the other thing. So I think we'll do that. And then for the color of it, again, I was thinking white, but if it's some kind of weird alien skull sort of thing, I did just get some more of my Lindy's. I don't know if you can see the mica moving around. And I have an unhealthy love of mica. Um, I actually went to high school with a guy named Micah. So if you're out there, Micah, not you, um, the mineral. <laughs> but it's, it's shiny and sparkly and I love these. So I've got a bunch of different colors. Got red. You can see that moving around in there. It's teal. Um, I can't see that one very good. There's a brown. I mean, so there's lots of, of different options. So it would definitely dictate whether we're going to use white or black gesso for these um, and whatnot. So I'm going to poke through this stuff. I'm going to pick out some, maybe some candidates for decorating this. And I'll be right back. So I debated going and getting my glasses so I could see what I was doing. But, you know, I'm stubborn and I didn't want to go all the way across the room you know house whatever but I put these on a card so you can see and I put the dime there for scale so these are some different watch parts that I've kind of pulled out um, 
So you've got either watch hands, different gears, cogs. This is some kind of a winding pin thing here. These are, I think the technical term is weird looking pokey things. I don't know, I don't know what the hell they are. Um, and these are parts of the, the clock face thing itself. Um, and just all kinds of weird, neat stuff that we can maybe put around it, which I'm going to sit down gently so I don't dump it onto the floor. Okay, so I also, of course, see that's the danger of doing this kind of stuff when you have a lot of things to dig through, like especially watch parts, because then I start getting other ideas for other things. So I've got these watch bodies, these two, some have more parts than others here on this one, and I'm like, oh, it's giving me ideas for things, because obviously it won't fit in here, it won't fit in the other one, but it did remind me that I got another one of these, well, I got three of these vacuum tubes from, um, Retro Cafe Art Gallery. That is, I, I actually have a card now. It was in the box the second time I ordered because, you know, I can't stop myself. I have no willpower. Um, so I got that. I also got these two optical lenses. So I know Tim Holtz and a bunch of other people have come out with some some cool optical lenses. These are the real deals. Um, I don't, they're vintage at least. I don't think they're antique, but you never know. This actually looks kind of antique. This looks vintage, but something with this, I don't know. So um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be setting those aside. So that may be a future video. So that'll be kind of cool. Um, and I pulled out this watch face and I thought for a minute, oh, that's kind of stupid. Why would I? But you know, it, it does look kind of, I mean, obviously put it so it, it covers up that whole date slot or something like that here. I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing. So We'll put this the size of maybe. But anyway, so that's what we can do with that. So I think that's what we'll do is we will put this on the wire. Uh, we're gonna put the foam, we're gonna glue it <laughs> to the bottom. Maybe put something over the top. I don't know if I wanna use, I have some moss still. I don't know what other stuff I would have to put on it that would make more sense. Or do I try to find gears that'll say, well, Oh, you see, that's how this stuff goes. So I'm going to put this in here. You can see how it's a fairly, you know, tight fit to begin with. So whatever we do to it is going to have to fit within the confines of this, no matter what. So if we put it on some kind of something that has to not make it too tall to fit in here, right? So what I think we're going to do is set this stuff to the side and work on the skull part of the back. So since this one got kind of trashed and I'm not terribly upset or anything because it's I, I have the mold, I can redo it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to finish taking this little orbital piece off here with my craft knife. Kind of clean up these edges just a little bit and see, okay. You would want to round that because you wouldn't have the weird pokey things on the back of the skull. Or maybe you would, I don't know. Okay, so there's this. So now this, when it sits back here, I mean, it almost looks like a different raven a little bit, but um, we can sand it down as well. So get some sandpaper here. Do the back first. I'm just going to kind of round this here and then definitely yeah and we're just gonna fling it to the ground watch me break the damn thing um, I'm gonna sand this part down a bit so it's a little less beak like you know and it's more kind of maybe it's a continuation of something I don't know but it's gonna be the back nobody's gonna see it but this way at least if they do they have something interesting to see besides the back of what's very obviously a piece of paper clay skull, you know. I want to kind of hide the the brow features that make you go, oh, that's a whatever. Kind of smooth it down a bit. So there we go. So the question is, now obviously he wouldn't have a skull on the back of his beak, but well, maybe. Maybe he had a really bad overbite, you know. Needed to go to the crow dentist. I don't know. Um, yeah, that should work. And then we can put a bunch of stuff sticking up out here. Okay, that's obviously too big. Um, the gears, we can put little whatever. So in order to do that, what we're going to need to do then is we're going to want to paint this first. 
because if you put all those little tiny gears and you go to paint it, there's no way in hell you are going to miss those gears. So since I'm doing a steampunk one, I think I will go ahead and use black gesso. And black gesso will kind of level the playing field anyway as far as blending those two together. And then maybe we'll hit it with some of the, the mica stuff and see. Or maybe, yeah. Okay. I'm just going to quit coming up with 15 different things to do and shut my pie hole and just do it. How about that? So I'm going to put it on fast forward and uh, let you guys watch the whole gesso business. So, you may be wondering, number one, why did I paint it in black in the first place? And then why did I go over it with the white? While well, the white, and I don't know how well this is focusing. Um, here, let me do this and see if I can. Is that working out? No, probably not. Anyways, um, so the, oh wow, that looks terrible. So I did them in black because the mica shows up much more dramatically on black than it does on white. Um, it'll still show up, but just not as loud and in your face. Um, and these are fairly translucent. So with the white areas, even if I take this, see, I'm going to lose every damn one of those things. Um, even if I take this and complete it, coat it with like one color, you'll still see highlights and shadows because I built them in underneath. Um, the other stuff. Wow, that was eloquent, wasn't it? Okay, so unfortunately with these I cannot cheat. I have to actually use a palette um, because they are a lot more liquidy. So I think we're going to start with the brown, and this is Beaver Tail Brown. This is the Northern Lights um, set, so it's all Canadian, which is cool. Um, so you have to shake these up real good. Okay, and just for fun and to kind of show you what the difference is, I've got a piece of black chipboard here to scrap. Um, and I'm going to put some of this in here. It really doesn't take much because this is kind of small. And then I will close that lid and we'll get the paintbrush. I'll show you how it looks on white versus black. Hopefully I've zoomed into this. That's all I'm saying. Future me, I hope you zoomed into this. Okay, so here it is on this. And here it is on this. So you can see the sparkle better. Um, this looks a lot duller. Okay, It's a dark color, so I mean you can only do so much. But I'm going to paint this brown to begin with. And see how it's translucent? It's just kind of going over the stuff. This stuff is water soluble. So um, you can do some really cool things. Like I said, I don't know if I'm going to do any mixed media on this channel ever, but um, if I do, guaranteed it will involve mica sprays and a spray bottle and weird, creepy, dripping rust textures. So, all right, so let's do that with the blue. And then, you know what, that's not exciting enough. So let me do the red. And these ones are really, really, really dark, so. And again, here's the red on the 
white and here it is on the black. So when I swatch this stuff, I always, let's see if you can pick it up. I always swatch it on white and black, just so I know what it's gonna do. Um, let me grab my swatches and I'll show you. So for example, these are for the Finnebear paints. And so I just take a strip of black and I, I glue it down and I paint over both of them because some of them are fairly different, whether you're on um, a white surface or a black surface. Where you really, really see it is the Opal Magic waxes. So these are waxes, they're an interference color. So it'll have two different colors that it kind of reflects a bit. Um, on the white, it might as well even be there. But on the black, ooh, it really pops up. Okay, same with, so anyways. And as it dries more, you'll, you'll see the difference too. Let's see what it looks like when we put some red on here. That is like really bright. Whoa, crap. I want some on the back anyway, why not? Back over. Mm -hmm. Rinse that off. And the beauty of it, if it gets to a point we don't like, you just let it dry and you hit it with black gesso again and start over. So it's really uh, very low risk, this type of stuff. All right, that should be bright though. Put it in there. All right, and again, put a little bit of that on here and put a little bit of it on the black. You can see, it's hard to tell if you can see the sparkle. Sparkle's really hard to do on camera, but you can see the sparkle to that versus, we'll put these guys on the glass mat. Yes, this has sparkle, but it's not, it doesn't pop like this does in a, in a very subtle way. So you can add all kinds of weird extra colors to things. All right, let's put you back here. Let's see what the gold does. I'll just put it on some of the high areas there. Okay. I'll let that dry for a minute. And I think I might actually hit it with something a little bit lighter. So I don't want it to be quite that dark. Okay, and just to be fun, I want to check out the teal. There's the teal on there, there's the teal on here, and we'll kind of put a heavy layer of it on here. And see that's the problem is that these colors are very translucent, so without an undercolor there, it's probably going to need extra help, but that's fine. All right, so I have got my Metallique. This is Ice Queen is what this one's called. It's kind of like a weird blue metallic. Um, now it's going to blend, even if those are dry, it's going to kind of reactivate them. So I have no idea what this is going to look like. Maybe I should hold it with my tweezers. I'll probably destroy it holding it with my tweezers. Okay. I'll just do kind of a dry brush of it over this and kind of lighten it up a bit. And then we'll hit these with some more of the, the metallic stuff here. Now let's leave the eyes the way they are. We won't go into there, but I do want to hit the back a little bit. Okay, that will take a minute to dry. I'll be right back. Okay, so that should be good enough. And these are getting a lot more dry. Let's see if you can see. Can you see all the sparkle in that? There we go, that's showing up a little bit. That's how it looks on there. And then scoot these over here. On the white, it's still shiny, but it's not, it just doesn't pop the way it does on the black. I don't know why, but to the cleaner side. So we can have a little more contrast here. Okay, this is actually starting to look kind of like metal, which works out nice. Looks almost like iron. Um, so let's go back in with some brown again. And see, now that's showing up a little bit better. And then along with 
along with the brown, we'll do teal because believe it or not, brown and teal is a really cool color combination. Which I love. It looks almost like a patina. So this is going to look kind of like some sort of weird alien raven patina skull. I don't know. Oh, I haven't tried one of them. This is the blue Banff blue. Throw a little blue in the mix here, too. And then back to more teal, because this will really make the teal stand out. And the nice thing is these colors mix with each other really well when you have it like this. So it's almost like watercolors. They'll kind of flow into each other and, and do all these really cool effects. A little bit of gold in there, and then maybe a tiny bit more of the dark blue. I have no, no idea what this skull is made of, but it's, it's interesting, that's for sure. <laughs> All right, let's scoot this over a little bit out of the puddle of stuff. We're going to let it dry, and then I will show you how that looks when it's dry. So it's getting there. Let me hold it up so you can see it. Maybe it so you can see where the light is on it and hopefully that's in focus but so it looks like this really cool kind of metallic um, thing we got going on there so now we also need to work on the other stuff that's going to be on it so we've got our wire that we're going to need um, we've got the foam to do and I did after the last um, thing that I made I replaced my rust textures I'm not going to rust this, but I may rust some of the gears. So those I do have on standby for that. So we're going to put this aside over here. Let that keep drying. And let's go ahead and do the foam. So probably just need a eh, small layer. This stuff cuts really easy too. And you have to remember to leave room for the glass of the... Um, cover to go over it. I'm going to take this down a little bit this way. There we go. Okay, that should be good. I'm not going to save these tiny pieces because that would be a bit ridiculous. I'll save this piece though. Alright, so this is going to go in here and then our skull is going to go in the case. So what we need to do is kind of hold this here and just verify that our skull is going to be able to fit with this being this height. And it should, so maybe I think I'm going to take it down just a little bit. We just need something for the wire to stick into to hold it. That's, that's really all we're doing here. There we go. And so then the wire, we'll just cut a length of wire and then we can trim it down as we need it. So... Actually, that's going to be the top of the head. Let's hold it here. It's going to be the bottom. So, we want our wire to be about EA long. Okay, and so it's going to stick in here like this. And this will stick in here like this. Skull will be on there. And we'll be good to go. So in the interim, we'll put our wire there. We're going to put some glue on here to hold this down. Yeah, when I was making the, the little flower arrangement stuff, I, I forgot to, I don't know, glue the foam down like a moron. So I do a lot of things like that. That's okay. All right. So we'll let that sit there and figure out what we want to cover that with. I'm trying to think of what I have. Oh, I know what I have. Okay, I might have something. All right, so more mixed media stuff, go figure. But I have my um, gel medium, which makes a great glue. And I have these. So these are another Fenibear thing. They're art stones. You see here, you've got large, small, medium. 
Um, basically, from what I understand, like when they make glass, when they do glass stuff, this is like some of the stuff that's left over that burns off of something. I don't know. But they're really cool and they absorb stuff, but they, they make a great like little texture for stuff. So maybe we'll use those. I don't know yet. We still have to wait for things to dry. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. All right, so this has dried somewhat enough. Hold it up again so you can kind of see how it's doing over here. So we've got our nice shiny, yeah, it looks almost like a, some sort of brushed iron sort of thing. Um, so what we're gonna do to it is, since these are mica, um, most of the things, there's a few um, mediums that, that have mica that are permanent when they dry, but not very many of them. So you do need to protect it because if I were to rub my finger on that, it's going to do this. That's what this kind of stuff's from. So we're going to go ahead and just use the, you always want to use gloss. If you use a matte, you will dull the finish. You might as well not have used mica at all. But um, this is that Sculpey gloss glaze. Same stuff I use for some of the wood furniture to make it look like it's been kind of polished-ish. Um, and of course, it's, it's going to react to this, but that's okay. But we're just going to put the glaze on here which will keep it nice and shiny, actually accentuate some of the shiny. And most importantly, it's gonna keep our finish the way we have it and protect it. So that way, if I do another texture thing on top of here, it's not gonna uh, run into a huge problem with the Lindy sprays that I put on here. Oops. There we go. Yeah, see how it's pulling that color? All right, so let that dry and then I'll hit the back of those in a minute. As soon as they're dry, this stuff gets kind of tacky. So with most things, I can kind of flip them over. It's not gonna hurt it, but this, it'll stick. So put those there. And then in the interim, what I did was I took this and I kind of shaved it down a little bit. So it's, it's a little more rounded. It looks more like a rock or something. Um, so, this is dry enough that we can we can fiddle with it. So I think we'll take the gloss glaze stuff here. Now these things can be kind of fiddly. Um, they can be very fiddly. They're very lightweight. They look like little stones. They do not feel like little stones. But getting them onto stuff is a pain in the rear. Um, I'm just gonna say it. But what you do is you take your, your gel medium and you just kind of dip it in and grab some and you just kind of smush it because you want this gel medium to take those rocks and kind of coat them and, and hold them on there. And so we're going to put a little bit of the medium. We're not going to use a large or way too large. Um, and we need to make sure to keep that area around the edge clear for the glass. And these things just go everywhere. And they stick to everything except to what you want them to stick to. That's why they're so, so irritating. So that's going to be way too many, but that's fine. We'll take some off because they're going to come falling off anyway. All right. So we got those. We'll kind of smush those down. We'll use something that doesn't have gel medium on it. Okay, and while we do that, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this in the center real quick just to make sure we've left a spot clear for it. We're gonna let these dry a little bit and then we'll put some of the um, smaller ones on. Stuff has been kind of drying over there. I've been kind of playing. Here is our skull now. And it's had the shiny on it. So it's kept that, that metallic luster, but now it's protected, now it's sealed in there. So one of the things that I did while I was waiting for this to dry a little bit more is I took this and I, I kind of drew it out on here poorly. Um, and I was playing around with gears and, and pieces, kind of where do I want to put these? Because I have no clue where I want to put these. I do know that I can't go very high above the top of his skull because then it's going to interfere with the, the glass lid and we don't want to do that. So we will fiddle about with this in just a second, but we're gonna do the other part of this because it's gonna have to dry some more. 
So basically, I put a little tiny bit of the small rocks in there, um, art stones, so it would be on this top part so I wouldn't have to fiddle with the, the gel medium and all this. So now these, we're, gonna, we're not going to dip it in there. We're just going to put some gel medium on here and some of these hollow areas. You can see they're still kind of, they'll still move a little bit. But anywhere where we didn't have the little stones cover and we've got the the oasis foam stuff and so get some more in there and then we'll put the little small ones in. You know, I, I like the way they look. I don't, you know, I'm not crazy, crazy. I don't put them on everything. A lot of people do, but um, they're just, uh, they just get on my nerves so bad that, that I hardly ever use them, so. Now you see why. Okay, and I'll just kind of wipe the matte medium off here. And God forbid I had these open, you know. Don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take these and we're going to kind of sprinkle them in and around. And they're going to get just everywhere. Like little tiny irritating sprinkles you put on cookies but without the color and it's a trip because they're really really lightweight these things and they they feel like they should weigh more especially the medium and the large ones but they're super light so they just bounce and they get all over the place okay so we'll let that dry a bit and get this back on here get some of these off my desk of course they're all over this okay so we can probably go ahead and put our wire um, on the back here and start letting that dry. So for that, we are going to use, I think we'll use the E6000 for that since it's metal. And since the E6000 is nice and thick, it'll give us a nice cushion. And, you know, yes, this isn't going to lay flat because obviously we're going to have this, but we're going to have gears and things too in the middle. So it, it wasn't going to lay flat anyway, so we're good. But I know this will give us a nice firm hold. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this part here, put the wire in, and then once it's set pretty good, we will start adding all of our gears and things um, to the back of this. We'll put some more around on the front and, and what have you, but put it right about, about like that as I stick my finger right in it. So, got it right about there and so that way if this ends up being too high for this we can just trim this down here um, and it'll be fine so this will hold it pretty good all right so as with all things of this nature it's hurry up and wait so I will see y'all again when more of this stuff is dry yay so that should have been fairly sufficient drying time um, I went and finished something else in the interim and so brought this stuff back out here and I've got all of the gears here so if, if we want different ones if we need other ones we, we've got them there so before we get too excited and start painting and stuff we need to make sure that this is going to fit so since this has had enough time to set up on here I'm going to go ahead and push it down in here and then put our top on oh just barely look at that so what this means is we don't have any much clearance going up um, and the way we have it in here in these rocks I mean we could maybe go down a tiny bit here let's there's my snippers okay let's take just a little bit off here and when you're dealing with taking little tiny, tiny bits of metal off like that, be very careful because they're the ones most likely to fly into your eye. All right. So we'll put this down in here. Put our lid on. And it bought us, oh, bought us a tiny bit of clearance. So we can maybe have a couple gears poking just a little above his head. But we are good to go for this. Yay. Okay. Because otherwise that was going to be very disappointing. All right, so we're gonna sit him aside for now and we're gonna turn our attention to this because of course this is gonna to have to be painted and dried and painted and dried and painted and dried. So we're gonna start with the black gesso.
Okay, so now we can go back to this. And what we're going to put on here. And I have no idea what we're going to put on here, so we're just going to wing it. So let's see how this does. I don't know if I like that there. It's a bit much, but right here it's not too bad. And again, we've got clearance up here, so we can have a couple little gears poking out. So you know what, let's go ahead and make those little gears poke out first. That looks good. Oh, it looks looks almost like it's a girl and she's going to some kind of music festival or something. Okay, so we need to make this a little more interesting. So we've got these ones that kind of come off like little arms. So that one, would I sit it right down on it? There it is. And this one. So we can have those coming off to the side and then we can attach other little gears to those too. Okay, so try to do this without dropping anything. Okay, so that's where we stand with the decoration now. So it would be best to just sit that there and let that stuff set up a bit before we add anything else to it because we're going to add um, some gears on the front to these little arms um, and who knows what else. Okay, so we're going to let that set up. Let that finish drying here a little bit more and um, then I will come back with you and progress because steampunk takes time. So a lot of freaking time when you deal with watch parts. All right, be back in a sec. All right, so in theory, this is dried, not really dried, but at least set up enough so we can add some more things without damaging it. So here's where we are so far. Let me find ha, another piece of paper to put this on. Okay, so here's where we are now with this. So obviously we can add a little bit more to it. Um, what about the back? What else do we want to put on the back? I was thinking of putting like maybe this larger one back here behind stuff. Well, let's hold this with pliers, pliers, Jesus, tweezers, and put it back here. It actually looked kind of good back there. So we'll go ahead and do that. up here so you can see okay so see now we've got the two there we go it's a little more flat trying to look at the mirroring software and hold it flat is, is not a, a good time I tell you all right so there we are 
So we got those. Anything else for now? No. Okay. So we're going to leave this again to set up and dry again. And we'll turn our attention to this. How are we doing here? It's still a little bit wet in some places, but it's not too bad. I'll probably get away with putting some paint on there. Um, just know it's going to blend a little bit with the black, but that's fine because it's going to give us a darker version of it. So I've got a couple things. I've got um, the Metallic Rustic Brown, which is kind of brownish gold. I have this, so the Sparks paint is really sparkly and it goes over stuff, but it, it's very translucent, so it's not going to make it this color, but it'll add some really cool looking highlights to it. And then I've also got the liquid acrylic, of course. So if we need to tone anything down, we can. So again, acrylics are water soluble um, until they dry, in which case they're not. But so what we can do is we can start putting some paint on here in places. And if it's too kind of thick or something, we want to see how it's covering up some of the contours of stuff. That's when you bring out your water, but let's get a little bit more on there before we do that, because once we do that, it's going to start becoming more interesting. We'll put it that way. Okay, so we'll set that down. I'm going to spray some water on this. What that does is that's going to take all that paint and it's going to start flowing down and around. And then you can take your brush and kind of guide it to where you want it. Um, and it helps you get into like those little crevices and things like that. Uh, get a little bit more. Well, oh, that stuff kind of dry on the lid there. Okay, and you don't want to do too much water though. You know, if you've if you've done your gel medium, gel medium takes a while to dry, like a long while. Which a lot of times, why you'll see people when they do the mixed media tutorials and their stuff still moving around, is they didn't want to wait the actual time it takes for. Um, the gel medium to dry so they're they're just kind of getting it to where it'll at least stick and not move too bad and they can still fix it so which is kind of what I did too all right so we're gonna let that dry a bit so we got that drying we got that drying and once again I will return so we are still waiting for that to dry but this should have set up enough where we can start messing with it a bit more so We'll turn it over on this side here and see what we want to put on these little arms.
So I'll let you see the front and the back. And this, I think, I think we're done messing about with it because it's just, it's going to get messed up at some point. So here's these. And hopefully you can see these. Um, I'll probably be zooming in uh, once I get into uh, my editing software to make sure you guys can actually see these because these are so tiny. You know, if you're viewing it from here, you can't see anything. So it's like, what the hell are you doing? Uh huh. Can't see anything. They're very tiny. So I will do that. But um, in the interim, let's see where we're at with this. Yeah. So this is good too. So we will scoot this over here. Oh, look, I found another one. I'm probably going to be finding those for a little bit. I think. I think I got most of them back in there. All right. So now we're going to do the liquid acrylic and burnt sienna. And a little bit goes a long way with that. And then instead of the sparks, I think I'm going to use some of the, the Lindy's stuff. So this still has a way to go to dry um, and I've been looking at it and I thought, you know, what'll kind of make this okay because it looks like, I don't know, cow pie. I don't know what the hell it looks like, but um, what would make this kind of cool would be some sort of rust texture. So I'm going to have a think about it and I can either go with the green and gray version of the rust texture or I can use my rust paste. Now this is my old one. You can see how old that is. Um, and these are the ones I got to replace it. And so this can be kind of like a rusted lump of metal. I don't know what, whatever it is. Um, and that'll make everything all better. And so we're going to set that aside. And all I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and glue the back to the front. Um, because we want this to dry, I think overnight to make sure it's nice and strong and we're not going to damage it while trying to put it in its little holder. So for this, I'm putting a nice thick, thick, thick layer because it, the layer on the back here is very, very uneven, obviously. So it's got all this stuff on it. So we're going to want it to stick really good. So let's pick this up and get it so it somewhat aligns with things. <laughs> it's like, where does skull go? It's like it's here somewhere. Okay, we'll put this kind of here. And this is just the back. I mean, so, I mean, somebody might see it if they, they turn the piece around. They're probably not gonna, but that way if they do, they've at least got something to look at. More interesting again than, you know, just a bunch of gears stuck to something. Okay, so we're gonna sit this on its front to dry. And I'm gonna let this dry overnight. And then I will come back in the morning and we will finish this thing. You know, that takes a hundred times longer than I think it does, but any of this kind of stuff, it really does. So and I should know better, but that's okay. I knew this wasn't going to be fast as I go breaking everything. Um, so it's all good. Okay. So we have our back here with, I think that's cat fur. We'll remove that. Um, and then our front and you can't see the back from the front. That's the important part. So it's not going to detract from anything. Okay. And so we'll sit that here. We've got this golden cow pie or whatever drying here that I will fix to look not so ridiculous tomorrow. It's, it's, it's one of those things you just keep throwing something at it till it sticks and, and worst case scenario, if, if I can't get it to look good, I'll be prying that off and putting something different on. So there you go. Um, so I will be back when this is nice and super set. So we are back and, and I always feel like Brody from Mallrats. Uh, yeah, the kid is back on the escalator, but we're back from overnight. It dried. And so we have our little clockwork raven here and it's attached to its back now and it's it's looking pretty snazzy i must say i do i do like this thank god 
But what I'm not so thrilled with is this. And it's still, to me, it, it looks like some sort of golden cow pie from a, a, just a god-awful fairy tale, right? Seriously. So... I need to fix this because I'm not, I'm not happy with it. And that happens all the time. Uh, let's make sure we're still fitting too, by the way, and we are. Um, so what are we gonna do to fix it? Well, you have a couple options. You can remove it, start over, put something different. Um, I'm gonna try to salvage what we have because I do like the texture and the shape and it looks kind of like some sort of cool, maybe meteorite sort of rock thing, but it's just the color is just, it does nothing for me. And when you put this, up here in its little spot it see it just it doesn't do any there's no contrast to it so what we're going to do is we're going to use rust texture because rust texture will cure a lot of things hides a multitude of sins just like uh, distress ink does so we have a choice we can go with the gray green or we can go with the traditional rust texture so with this see how the color tones are, are pretty much the same in this i don't think that'd be enough contrast but with the traditional rust it will so what we're going to do is we'll put it on with the brown first, then the yellow, then the red. Why that order? Because I like the red better than the yellow, honestly. Uh, most people will put the red and then the yellow, and then you kind of work back and forth anyway. So what we're going to do is I'm going to use a, this is more of a stiff kind of stenciling brush, um, because the texture paste is very thick and it's got a grit to it, and this will allow us to kind of put it in different areas. Um, and we'll see how this brush, it usually does pretty good, but sometimes I need a little bit looser of a brush and I'll grab that if I have to, but it will destroy your regular brushes after a while. So let's go ahead and take the lids off of these and these are brand new. So I'm going to make sure you keep this. See how I don't have it on this? Not having it on the regular rust color and the brown rust color are what contributed to the early demise of my well early demise I mean I had them for years but um, earlier than I wanted to how's that demise of my other rust ones so these are the Finnebear um, ones done by Prima and they are just fantastic and she's got a, a few different sets now so you got the traditional rust um, and then like this green there's another color that goes to I can't remember which one there's a patina one um, and they're they're just really cool I just, the other ones I haven't found really much of a use for, but I'll get them someday, I'm sure. That's just how I roll. Get that wiped up. Okay, so we're gonna start here with the brown. Okay, so here is a piece that I use the rust texture on. So here, 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 and here. And so you just kind of work back and forth and then as it dries, it gets more of that, that texture to it. So it looks even more real. So that's what, we, that's what we're aiming for <clears throat> is this in here. So again, for a first pass, this is pretty good here. And we're going to let this dry because this is going to dry back very matte and dull. That's what the, the finish on these is. So we'll leave that there. But as you can see, with this just sitting next to it, that's going to provide a bit more contrast to it than the other stuff did. So I'll join you back in a minute when this is a little more dry. And then maybe, maybe we can finish this. Oh, that'd be fun. So I put that on the wrong damn one. Okay, see y'all in a second. All right. So that has dried most of the way. And as you can see, that is looking so much better now. Um, and it's it's dry, it's not as shiny. You can see little bits of that gold kind of stuff peeking through a little bit, so you can tell it's metallic in there. Um, I am, however, I think gonna add a little bit of this. So this is the patina effect brass stuff. This is the only remaining piece of my patina kit, which I'm gonna have to replace. But it's, it's texture is different from the regular paint. It's a lot thicker. Um, and I think this will give us a really nice um, 
color in there as well. how it's doing so far it looks better than than the original it's still not you know still not the coolest thing on earth but i really couldn't think of what the heck to put this in you know honestly so all right once again we're gonna let this dry and hopefully when i come back to you we can just stick this in there stick that on there and we're gonna be done so wish me luck hopefully i won't notice anything in the meantime so in a move that should surprise precisely no one I'm still kind of eh, on the fence about this. It's like it's, it's missing something and I don't know what it's missing. And so I, I went digging through my extra stuff. I have a whole bin of things that are extra from when I do like the little the room kits and the, the other miniature kits and things. Um, and I hang on to everything. So I even hung on to this tiny little bit of this. This is what's called, I think, scene scenery powder. Um, they use it when they do model train sets where they'll do like the town and everything. And those guys, oh my God, make some just incredible things at, at a very small scale. And and so they use that to be like lawn and grass and everything. Um, I do have this stuff too. I just don't think this would quite work on there. It's, it'd be a little weird, but this stuff is, is also to replicate grass. This is, I don't know, it's probably asbestos. I have no idea what this stuff is but um and it just gets everywhere but this the colors just aren't quite right for it anyway so i'm not going to use that but and i have this stuff too this stuff is like this like weird little foam stuff and it also is good for doing grass and shrubbery stuff like that um, and it looks like it would just go right on and everything but this it's when you try to put it on stuff it tries to bounce away it's just annoying as hell but i thought maybe with tweezers and guidance just a little couple pieces but i think i'm going to do the scenery powder because when i put the skull in here see it's still kind of uh, there's some contrast but not quite enough so maybe just a little bit in the base kind of going off in in some weird direction so i've got my glue and we're just going to go for it because again Worst case scenario, we just take this off and start again and find maybe a different kind of thing I can screw up, right? So, and it happens. It's, it's kind of all part of the process. It evolves. Um, so we're going to have this going kind of in sort of random ways and kind of coming down a little bit. That should do it. So... And this stuff is, it's small enough in scale and it's, it's subtle enough. It shouldn't try to overpower everything and, although it might, who knows. So, of course it looks really weird because it's the glue, but once the glue dries clear and we won't see that, we'll just see scenery powder. I think that might give me that contrast I'm looking for because none of my paints look like a good match. I don't want to try to paint, you know, say grass on there because that's it's really not my forte and that becomes very apparent very quickly when I try to do it. <sighs> okay, so that's that's where we're leaving it again. So it's a little bit, <laughs> looks like a cow pie that rusted and is made into a weird cake. No, I'm kidding. Um, it's actually looking a bit better. So I'll do that maybe a little bit. Let's see what are we gonna have as the front of it? We'll have that as the front. No, you know what? That should be okay. Let's just try a little bit of less is more. At some point I'll stop messing with this, I promise. Um kind of let that dry. Uh and I'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, that's dried quite a bit more and I think I'm finally done with it. I think that's kind of what it was missing. It was just so this color so much the same as this color and there was just no contrast. And then when you put him on here, there's some more contrast between the two. So, so I think I'm okay with it for now. You'll be very happy to know. 
So I just need to figure out which part I want as the front. So I think, um, I think like here. So we'll view him from here. So we're gonna put this down like this. Gonna get our trusty E6000. This bottle is almost gone. And we're gonna put a whole bunch of it on here. We want a nice big thick layer because again, you know, that's, it's not like it's this tiny hole that just exactly matches this. It's, it's got some um, Oasis foam and other kinds of stuff. So we wanna make sure this gets in there real good and stays in there. So there we go. I'm gonna put him in here and we're gonna make sure he's standing upright. And we're gonna let him dry at least a little bit, set up a little bit, um, so that uh, I don't, I don't want to glue the, really, I don't want to break the top of it. I don't want to glue the top of it onto it and then have it go bloop, and then I can't get to it. So I'll get that piece of cat fur off of there. Okay, so we have our little friend here. There he is. So we're gonna sit and let him set up, and then I will put the top on it and glue that part down so you don't have to go through that and I'll come back and I'll show you the finished piece. Thank God. See you in a second. So finally, I think I'm happy with this. So that's why the gears are safely back in their little jars. And I've got something contrasty to show it to you against. So I've put the top on and here we have it. Here is our little clockwork raven in the dome. So, and I think it looks good with the green on there. So that's kind of a, you know, I'm, I'm really glad I save every little bit of that because that was, you saw how much was left of it. There was hardly any, but that's all I needed to do this and to get it kind of to where I wanted it. Um, and it goes up, you know, fairly close. So there's no way to not do the glare on here, but it goes up fairly close to the top and I'll, I'll do some better pictures of it um, for the thumbnail and maybe I'll, I'll see if I can put a close up one in here hopefully, um, and then uh, it'll find a, a spot in the house. So I just gotta figure out where it's gonna go. So anyways, yay, it's finally done. Happy, happy. Okay, so here is our final piece. It's all nice and dry. Um, hopefully you can see it well. It's kind of hard to get this thing. The closer I get, the more out of focus it gets. Woo. Um, but anyways, this is our Raven, a Clockwork Raven. Um, just like the other one. I still haven't figured out where I'm going to put it in the house. So I will, I will get to that point. But, you know, thanks for bearing with me on this fairly long video. And I hope you really enjoyed it. And I hope you guys make something like this yourself. Because it, it was really fun despite all the challenges, <laughs> we'll say. So at any rate, um, I will be working on the stuff with the paper clay next. And so um, I made these with uh, one of the different molds that I got. This is air dry clay. I also did them out of resin. So I think the next project that we're going to do is to make, you know, like those those things like the plaque, the wooden plaques that they have that hold swords, um, because these are a good size to go somewhere on the wall. Got a hammer. There's like an axe, a couple other things. Um, or it'll end up being one of those, as I break it, um, shields where the swords cross and it kind of hangs on the wall. So we'll figure that out. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But anyways, that's what's coming up next. So I hope you guys join me for that as well and have a great night. Hey, Mary, see you guys later. Bye.